scripture holds the key verse 20 you have that down I'm reading from KJV so if you have KJV I want us to read the first four words that you see there I have found David ready one to read I have found David Hold on. One more time. I have found David. I have found David. Now read with me the next two words. My servant. So if we read it all together, it reads, I have found David, my servant. This is a very profound scripture. David was a man who understood the anointing from a shepherd he transited until he became a king and a very noble one. Hallelujah. That in Israel today, they consider the city of David, the star of David, in fact, is imprinted upon their flags. This was a man who did business with God until he became mighty. But there is a very profound secret here. And this is what I want to show you. He said, I have found David. But the anointing will not come upon David. I am looking for my servant. I found David a long time ago, but the anointing is not looking for David. The anointing does not come upon David. The anointing comes upon my servant. I have found Joshua Selman, but I'm still looking for my servant. I have found the preacher, but I'm still looking for my servant. I found a businessman, but I'm still looking for my servant. So he says, I have found David. No problem finding David. No problem finding Jacob. No problem finding Gideon. But I'm still searching for my servant. The oil does not look for men. The oil looks for a heart condition. Listen carefully. The anointing does not look for men. The anointing was authorized to respond to a certain heart posture. A certain heart condition. That no matter what the geography of your call is, if you do not assume that posture in the spirit, you cannot be genuinely anointed. I have found David, but I'm still looking for my servant. I found a very vibrant man of God in Dallas, but I'm still looking for my servant. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6, when you read from verse 1, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. My question is, why will he have to relate the death of someone or something to an encounter with the Lord? He would have just said, I saw the Lord. In the year that my pride died, I saw the Lord. In the year that my ego died, I saw the Lord. In the year that lust died, I saw the Lord. In the year that spiritual complacency died, I saw the Lord. The price for seeing him and encountering him is not just searching for him. It's killing what has tried to be him. Listen carefully. The jealousy of God mandates that he becomes Lord absolutely in your life. So if he has to join the queue with a plethora of other mundane flesh attributes like pride, vain glory and the rest, you will never be able to find and even host his glory. Is someone learning already? I have found David. I have found Isaac. I have found the businessman. I have found the sincere pastor, the apostle, the evangelist. But I'm still looking for my servant. And he can be looking for his servant for 10 years. He can be looking for his servant for 20 years. He can even be looking for a servant for your entire lifetime. 
Apostle, why has the anointing not come upon my life in spite of my prayer? Because you have not allowed that prayer to turn you from David into his servant. Why has my fasting not produced results? Because the fasting has not been allowed to turn you from David to his servant. I have found David my servant. I used to think that the anointing looks for men. But I found out from scripture that the anointing does not necessarily look for men. The anointing was designed to pursue a particular heart condition, a particular posture. In this case, a heart that the Bible simply calls my servant. Do you know what it takes to be the servant of God? Now, many people erroneously, because of the revelation of concepts like sonship, uh, when you talk about servanthood, uh, people generally frown at it because they say, no, I'm not a servant, I'm a son. But when you study your Bible properly, you will learn that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, who although being God, that he considered it not robbery to be God, but he humbled himself. So Jesus demonstrated that he was a son indeed by becoming a servant. Are we together? I have found David my servant. Many of you have come to receive from the Lord. You have come to receive from the Lord as say an intelligent entrepreneur and that's wonderful. You have come to receive from the Lord as a man of God, a businessman, a career man or woman. I have a very disturbing message for you. The anointing is not looking for a man of God. The anointing is not looking for a career person. The anointing is not looking for a businessman. The anointing is looking for my servant. What does it take to be a servant of God? There are two biblical requirements to be called a servant of God. Let me give it to you very quickly. Number one is found in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. The Bible says, and I read, and ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart you shall seek me that means if you claim to be seeking me and you do not find me a part of your heart lied to you that it is only when all of you is in pursuit of me that you will find me listen carefully there are many people who will tell you i am seeking the lord i want to know him and that may be sincere but there is a law it's called the law of encounter that you will only seek me and truly find me when you search for me with all your heart. The personality who represents encounters in scripture is the man Jacob. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 28 when you read that Jacob came to a place called Luz and he lay there to sleep at night and he lay upon a stone and the Bible says he had a vision of the night and he saw a ladder that connected the earth to the heavens. Am I right on that? And he saw angels ascending and descending. Is it not amazing that all kinds of spiritual activities were happening there and yet there was no encounter. It did not impact on Jacob's life. When he woke up, he said, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, this must be the gate of heaven, even the house of God. Watch this. Jacob misused that opportunity because his heart was not prepared. Now, when you study your Bible, the next phase of, jo of Jacob's life will be about 20 years of misery and pain in the house of Laban. By the time we get to Genesis chapter 32, another opportunity comes now. 
this time around he was a wealthy man he had his wives he had all kinds of things and here's what the Bible says he dismissed his wives he dismissed his cattle the Bible says when he was alone can you just play the keyboard for me just just flow just something yeah hallelujah the Bible says when he was alone when he dropped the certificate aside and said thank you but I want to seek who is higher and greater than you when you drop the ambitions and everything the Bible says when Jacob was alone there came a man one more time you missed it in chapter 28 now let's see how prepared you are whether you have now become my servant and the Bible says when Jacob was alone at that point nothing else mattered at that point it was not his wives again at that point it was not his cattle not his wealth not his ego not the battle between him and Esau those things became petty his attention and his gaze was on that encounter and the Bible says he held on to him and he said leave me for the day breaketh, he said, I will not let you go. I know the consequence of letting you go. I misused that opportunity in chapter 28. And 20 years of my life went down as a result of the absence of your presence and your power. I will not let you go. I rather let every other thing go. I rather let my ego go. I rather let my ambition go because I know that when I have you, I have every other thing. He says, leave me for the day break it. I am showing you the protocol to be genuinely anointed until everything that supposedly carries value in your life bows to the Lordship of the King. You will never genuinely be anointed I show you why our generation continues to search for power sometimes in vain because we carry the mundane luggages of all kinds of things and then we just hope to add God to the luggage no leave me for the day breaketh you have your wives you have your cattle you are rich and he said no I have come to a point where I realize that my life outside of you, even in the midst of all that I have, is vanity. And then he said, all right, let the transition process begin. What is your name? How does God bless a man? By talking about his name, not his situation. What is your name? Your name, your identity. A representation of your value a summation of everything that your life had been what is your name I know you are a professor he's asking you because he wants to change your name what is your name I'm an intelligent person by my strength I am the leading expert in my company but what is your name the, the anointing is looking for a certain posture it says I am Jacob it says thou shall no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have contended you have power with God and yet you have prevailed now watch what God calls the blessing for many years I read that scripture and it disturbed me here's how Jacob came to God here's how he returned how does a man come to meet God whole and return back incomplete and the Lord said that is how I bless Is it not in your Bible <laughs> that a man encounters God and he says, you want to carry my grace? I will have to touch that point of strength in your life that makes you sufficient without me. So that forever there will be an indication in your life that without me you can do nothing. I'm showing you what it takes to be called the servant of God. It is beyond just wearing a nice suit. It is beyond just holding a mic and being called a pastor. There is a process in the spirit. I tell you, I saw it's a very strong anointing here. This, my people, you're going to have to help me here. Eh? Can you look for strings for me and just, just, just flow? You are in for an experience within the next few minutes that we have here. Listen, 
because I believe that among the people seated here there are some of you the mantle listen this is not just don't shout amen yet the mantle of your destiny has been searching for you but you see it's not looking for an expert it's not looking for an ambitious man of God who wants a crowd no I have found help them please I have found help them the anointing of the spirit is moving now already in the name of Jesus the son of the living God help them I have found David but I'm looking for my servant Please bring them out. Just bring them out gently in front here. I have found David, but I'm looking for my servant. I have found a musician, but I'm looking for my servant. I'm not just talking about a good voice to sing. Please make sure they are not injured. Just drop them somewhere in front there. There's a reason why I ask that you bring them out. Listen to me. When you come to God, that celebrity mindset of wanting to use the anointing to be famous, you will never find the anointing that way. The anointing is for servants, not just celebrity. But strangely so, the anointing will so lift you and cause the nations to celebrate God in your life. But hear me, ladies and gentlemen, I came with a mantle and an anointing this morning to stir up a fire, to stir up a fire, to stir up a fire upon your spirit, man. I have found David. I have found David. You provide the fire. Listen to the song. I'll provide the sacrifice. He doesn't provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. Please get something to cover them so that you don't expose. Now I will open up inside. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up. Listen, man of God, it is not that God cannot lift you to become a mighty vessel, it is that this pride. That is hidden behind I just want to be anointed so that when I heal the sick they will say Joshua Selman is a great man you will never find God that way listen to me when you get to a place of repentance genuine brokenness where there is nothing else to be seen that you hide behind the cross and your desire is for Jesus to be seen more than an ambition more than the desire for fame more than the desire to be famous that my desire is to see Jesus exalted across the nations now you have become my servant I have found David to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you. That lady wearing blue. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. That lady wearing blue is a new season for your life. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, for you will never be the same again. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. Cry unto God from the depth of your heart. Listen, hear me, ladies and gentlemen. The first prayer we are going to pray is a genuine prayer of repentance. Lord, every pride, every flesh, everything hidden within my heart, I bring to the throne and I cry that you show me mercy purify my heart purify my motive purify my desires please open your mouth and pray purify my heart I have found David God has found you but he's looking for his servant 
God has found a musician, but he's looking for a worshiper. God has found a preacher, but he's looking for a vessel. God has found a businessman, but he's looking for a financial apostle. Make sure you are praying. Don't be distracted. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You just focus on this prayer. The miraculous becomes easy when your heart is true and sincere. Go ahead and pray. Purge my heart. Purge my heart. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It says, but in a great house, there are all kinds of vessels, some unto honor, some unto dishonor. It says, if a man will purge himself, if a man will purge himself, Jacob, you can become Israel. If you purge yourself, that man becomes a vessel of honor meat for the master's use is someone pray now hear me condition number two to be called the servant of god number one is your heart the state of brokenness the second is your desire to live your life to serve his purposes eternally i simply call it Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified, that that becomes the theme of your life, whether in business, whether in ministry, whether in family, that your entire life revolves around this theme, to see Jesus revealed and to see Jesus glorified. When these conditions are met, you have become the servant of God. I have found David, but I found him with all kinds of lusts and flesh and, and disorganization, just wanting to use the anointing to promote an ambition. It doesn't come that way. David, become my servant. By submitting to the governing authority of Jesus and then having a new creed and a new theme that governs your life that my entire life revolves around the revelation and the exaltation of the Christ. It doesn't matter whether it is in ministry, it doesn't matter whether it's in politics, that I'm here to promote the interests of heaven. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, when you assume that posture in the spirit, you have become his servant. You are ready to become like a trophy that he will display to the nations and show men the excellency of what it means to carry genuine power. Can I tell you, when you study your Bible and when you study modern history, history is full of men and women who though ordinary, they became servants of God indeed and certain mantles and graces came upon their lives. Hear me? The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Do not allow destinies go down because of carelessness. Do not allow destinies connected to you to go down. Now it is your turn. Are you going to allow flesh? Are you going to allow flesh to lead you down while destinies are destroyed? Or will you rise up? Will you rise up and say, Lord, as far as I'm concerned, count on me you can count on me with the destiny of nations open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray something is about to fall in this place 
man of God pray preachers pray it's time to carry genuine power the earnest expectation creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God it's time for every altar and every pulpit to carry genuine fire genuine fire America hear me God wants to restore fire authentic fire fire that leads to soul saved fire that leads to life transformed someone is praying forget about who is at your left and right focus on Jesus and cry from the depth of your spirit servant in business a witness an ambassador in politics in education in family someone pray someone pray for some of you your family members are depending on your transformation and your empowerment now listen everyone listen to me there are two ways to receive the power of God Number one is directly from God through encounters. Number two, the second way to receive is through impartation. Impartation is a transference of possibilities. That when God anoints a man, he intends for that anointing to reach everyone who is hungry and ready to receive not just for one person to hold it and merchandise it unfortunately are we together now hear me we're going to get straight into the miracle service that is already on there are three things that will happen here as my assignment this morning number one is an impartation that is already ongoing number two i'm going to be praying for the sick and that includes every oppression, whatever it is. You can stand in for yourself and stand in for your loved ones. Believe me when I tell you by God and upon the grace that is on our Father, there is no devil against your destiny that will remain after this encounter. You will marvel and wonder at the power of God. And then number three, prophetically, we are going to pray over our families, and all the issues of concern and lift up a cry to heaven when we're done and ask the Lord to visit us hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now listen I want to pray I ask the people to come out not just for a show there is a reason why I ask now I'm going to make three requests number one whether you are an usher or not if someone is under the anointing close to you, as much as you are receiving for yourself, please do well to manage them so they don't injure themselves. Are we together? And then eventually, so that we do not have this place becoming so chaotic, we may need to ask one or two of you to please volunteer and help when the time is needed. So please do avail yourself if there's need to manage people. This is not just some misbehavior of people. There are many things happening to those you see under the anointing. There are deliverances, there are healings, there are breakthroughs, and there are impartations. Now I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, everyone here who has the call of God upon his life, that God has called you to serve in the ministry, I release grace upon you now. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire, take that fire, take that fire, take that fire. America, I bring you the fire of revival, authentic apostolic revival. 
revival. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Let it burn in your spirit. Let it burn in the churches. Let it burn in your homes. Let it burn in the hospital. Let it burn in the school. Take that fire in the name of Jesus Christ. The call of God upon your life is time for that evangelistic call to find expression. It's time for that pastoral call. There are some of you who are called to be intercessors. There are many women here like Anna the prophetess. May that grace come upon you. Intercessors, intercessors, men of fire, women of fire, men of fire, women of fire, men of fire, women of fire, men of fire, women of fire. I want to pray right now. I believe that there are people here who will become end time financial apostles. Men who will be trusted with the wealth of nations. I don't know where you are, but I stretch my hands. May that mantle of a kingdom financier, let it come upon you. Men who will sponsor the gospel. Men who will sponsor the gospel. Empowered by grace. Empowered by God. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Very quickly. If you are in this place. And you are trusting God for a healing. Any part of your body. Or you are trusting God for a loved one. Now is the time to be healed. I want you to place your hand right at the point you are trusting God for a miracle. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. Standing for your loved ones. Standing for yourself. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. Believe. Hear me. Now lay your hands as I pray. Shout a loud amen as I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every devil of infirmity. I stand upon the grace of our father. And the grace of Jesus Christ. And I declare every spirit that is behind every infirmity. In the name of Jesus be gone now. Be gone now. Be gone now. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Ah, Shabakato Seketa. Be healed in Jesus' name. There's someone God is healing your arm, your right arm. Severe pains. The power of God is touching you now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. The Lord is showing me someone, you have severe pains around your neck area. You can't even sleep on one side because of the pain. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the power of God is touching you. The power of God is touching you. Every growth in your body, I command it to disappear now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I just saw like a sword of fire. And the Lord is saying he's delivering two people from depression. This is an acute state of depression. I command that spirit of depression. Leave them now. Leave them now. Leave them now. Out of their destinies in the name of Jesus. Now I decree and declare every blood condition be healed now. Blood conditions be healed now. Migraine headaches be healed now. Every bone condition 
pains around your joints be healed in the name of Jesus there's someone having severe back pain in fact you can't bend very properly it's, it's excruciating right now I decree and declare the power of God is touching you right where you are touching you right where you are I'm seeing someone your molars there's, there's severe pain around your molars the Lord is healing you right now the Lord is healing you right now eye conditions be healed now ear conditions be healed now the Lord is asking me to pray for someone I think it's like your elder sister is suffering from cancer they diagnose her of cancer in the name of Jesus I don't know where that person is but by the power that raised Christ from the dead no matter what stage we reverse it now cancer be healed I hope you know that you are standing in for your loved ones there are various stations there are hospitals who are praying in the name of Jesus there's someone who has excruciating chest pain it looks like ulcer in the name of Jesus the power of God is touching you now touching you now inability to sleep inability to sleep you lie down on the bed but you are not able to sleep max one hour and that's it in the name of Jesus I release you from that oppression now hear me anyone here called barren unable to be with child or for your loved ones who are connected in the name of Jesus Christ by reason of this miracle service according to the time of life by this time next year they return with their children by by this time next year they return with their children by this time next year they return with their children hallelujah the Lord is showing me someone you have severe pain around this is my right eye severe pain you can see but it comes with severe pain the power of God is touching you right now wherever you are the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ a lady you're having like a lump around the left area of your breast in the name of Jesus I'm praying for you we cause that devil from your body we cause that devil from your body the Lord is healing two ladies I'm seeing from severe bleeding this is what I'm seeing severe bleeding the power of God is going to come upon one of you and I declare that that satanic oppression I don't care how long it has been severe bleeding I'm seeing the Lord bring it to an end right now shout aloud amen in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is asking me to minister to someone that every time you go to bed you keep seeing dead people people who have long gone you keep seeing dead people the Bible says what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness what communion has darkness has to do with light in the name of Jesus I severe that connection everything that connects you to the dead I declare in the name of Jesus you are delivered now 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 in the name of Jesus now whether I mention your case or not in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus be healed now there's someone you have diabetes sugar diabetes the power of God is touching you now I'm seeing healing for diabetes in the name of Jesus I cause every devil my God I just had the sound of chains chains I want to pray every chain holding anyone down I declare at the count of three shout Jesus one two three be released now be released now every chain holding your destiny be released here at this convention I release you now I release you now he said let my people go that they may go and serve me 
chain, chains of addiction, chains of, of demonic oppression. Be free from it now. Every kind of addiction, we break that chain now. We break that chain now. The Lord is showing me somebody, um, not to get you emotional, but it's like I'm seeing someone and then I'm not seeing the person again. Is it a baby that died or something? It's like there was a loss. Um, whether you lost a who is that person? Come. Your baby, your mother, you lost your mother. When? Yesterday. It's 13 years today. Oh, okay, okay, I see. The person I'm talking about, you lost your child. You... I did. I was pregnant, like, from last year. I lost the baby in February. Oh, you lost the baby. Listen, I'm not calling you to embarrass you, eh? This is, this is so that because you are going to receive double. I'm calling you up. Do you believe in the power of God? Don't cry, madam. This woman lost her child. Oh, my God. Don't cry. You see, look at me, ladies and gentlemen. Many of you may never understand the pain of losing a child, losing a loved one. Sir, don't cry. My dear sister, don't cry. You see, if this is the reason why God allowed for this meeting, it was worth it. To be able to speak first the message of love, even before power. The Bible says to comfort those who mourn in Zion. So even in Zion, there can be people who mourn. Some of you are crying right now, but I want to pray for you. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Now, let me pray for you. Listen, for those of you who lost your children, I want to pray for you. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, I do a new thing. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. Every couple here that has lost a baby or has lost, you know, in pregnancy or whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, first may the Lord comfort you. And every spirit of untimely death, as I'm praying for them, I'm praying for someone here. Every spirit of untimely death, hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, release God's people now. Release God's people now. No one under the sound of my voice will die before your time. And as I pray for you, I pray for your children. As I pray for you, I pray for your family members. Where is that believer? Shout a loud amen. Now in the name of Jesus, for those who, has, who have lost loved ones, may my God comfort you. The Holy Spirit is called a comforter. May you be deeply comforted in the name of Jesus. And for those who are trusting God, by the way, how many of you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb? Don't come, just lift your hands. My God will surprise you because I, I, I sense that anointing as I was praying and I want to release that grace now. You're trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You don't have to come out. I will pray for you aside those who are here already. Just place your hand on your stomach as a sign of Sir, you and your wife, I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I pray for everyone here, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, as Eli prophesied to Hannah, as Elisha prophesied to the woman in Shunem, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, no matter how long you have been without a child, by this time next year, return with your miracle. By this time, return with your miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
no matter what the medical condition is in the name of Jesus by the power that raised Christ from the dead we bring you life we bring you healing in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ this man help that woman the power of God is resting on her I'm seeing something move from her stomach is over right now name of Jesus Christ all forever may the Lord bless you